morning, good morning, good morning, and thank you for joining me on Friday's episode of the Roundtable Talk Show. I am your host, Sharifa Hardy, and we have an amazing show for you today, amazing guest. And I don't know why, but somehow it just seemed to work this way. We have had plenty of women, women on the show this week. I think we're celebrating National International Women's Day the beauty of women, everything is wonderful. So I'm excited. We're going to have a great show. I'm going to go ahead and introduce today's guest. But before I go ahead and introduce the guest, I'm going to ask you to do what I ask you to do Monday through Friday, every day of the week. And that is to go out and be an evangelist for the Roundtable Talk Show. There's someone in your network, someone in your neighborhood, maybe someone in your house, maybe someone in your room, maybe there's a spouse. I don't know, but someone needs this information. Maybe they're an entrepreneur, a small business owner. They're just getting started and they need help to improve their business or maybe their life. And they won't have this information unless you go ahead and share the show with them. So text it, tweet it, inbox it, post it, whatever you have to do. Walk across the street, knock on the neighbor's door, but let them know the Roundtable Talk Show is live because friends do not let friends miss out on the Roundtable Talk Show. So while I while you're introducing the show to your friends, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our very first guest, Miss Dara Lagarde. Dara is a model, actress, entrepreneur. She is creating a company to sell clothes, shoes, and accessories, while also conducting lots of ways to give back to the world, including her new support group called Yella's Remedy Solutions. She hopes to bring people together and share their stories with confidence to build confidence. Good morning, Daryl. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm excited. I love learning about people, learning about their journey, learning about what they have going on. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? What do you do? And what are you passionate about? Okay. Well, hello. My name is Dara again, and I am just um, a Midwestern girl from Indiana living here in Los Angeles. Um, I have been working in the entertainment industry since about eight months old. Um, I started off in like modeling uh, and pageants and I also did a lot of print work. Um, as I started to grow, I branched off and did my own thing all the way up to moving to California. Um, before I moved to California though, I started my own little company um, called the Yellow Moment of Movements. And it's basically derived from my past experiences and wanting to give back a lot. I'm really big on giving my clothes to the homeless shelters. Um, I'm big on giving blood as well you know I want to be able to create pathways like that so I started off by doing t-shirts um, I love t-shirts that have sayings on them and um, like little clever sayings or inspirational quotes so I'm, I started off kind of making my t-shirts then I moved to California and branched into some other avenues I um, also do like promotion work um, as well and within the promotion work, I wanted to, like I said, create different avenues within my company. So I got my license uh, to uh, sell insurance through a brokerage company. And I also work with animals. Uh, that's been a really big thing about me since a child as well, is that I really like to work with animals. So um, within my company, I, like I said, with, with branching out uh, with different things and different avenues, I started my remedy group. That is, right now, it feels really special to me because with this remedy group, um, I don't want it to be like a therapy group. I want it to be more like um, a family. Like, you know, you're coming together. I feel like it's really hard for people to talk to each other nowadays. And um, with everything going on throughout last year uh, with the virus and all this and that, I just want to be able to help people. I'm always like, this is my time to help. <laughs> so with um, Yellow's Remedy Solutions, you know, I wanted to create this group where people can come and 
Um, every day, I'll or uh, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll be here on Zoom to be able to chat with people, um, give them insight of knowledge, having hands-on mental health issues. And so, um, you know, this safe space is good for people to be able to talk about their problems and not actually feel judged. I feel like we're so quick to put people in certain places when you hear certain things and they do certain things. So now I'm just like, no, you can come here, speak your piece, and then just be at peace if you need to. If you need help, you know we're here to help. But otherwise, um, I think it's really important that within everything that I'm doing, I can help one another, you know, help people because it's just a big thing that I love to do. So um, yeah, as of right now, I'm working with animals. I watch people's animals. I have clothes that I work with. I started doing hand embroidery. And also, um, I also, I don't know, I do a lot of stuff, <laughs> to be honest. But it's really fun to me to be able to be hands-on with people and just to know and finally realize. like to introduce the lovely Miss Desiree. Dubois. Good morning. How are you? Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> yes. So Desiree has, the, we're going to introduce De Desiree has had the joy of being an entrepreneur since the age of 12 with businesses spanning from modeling schools to Marina Mermaid Services. For over 12 years, she has been training multimedia marketing, teaching entrepreneurs how to create more credibility, visibility, and revenue streams with podcasts, videos, speaking, sponsors, articles, affiliates, memberships, masterminds, and awesome live events. Good morning, Desiree. How are you? Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm excited to be here, excited to learn more about you and what you have going on. Well, I am excited as well. I'm excited to share. So yes, uh, since 12 years old, people said like, what were you doing at 12 years old? And I was uh, taking dance lessons in the morning. And then I would go to the uh, uh, recreation center and teach the same dance lessons in the afternoon to the little children. And then when we had our recital, then I would prepare for their recital. And it was got so large that when we actually had the recital, the security came, they wanted to shut us down because we had exceeded occupancy. You know, and then at 12 years old, I had no idea what the occupancy was. And, um, but it was a great experience. And for me, everything that I've done, I think about the lessons learned from it because a lot of us have expertise now that we could actually be monetizing um, but we don't know or we think that we don't have the right degree or the certificate and all that's great but there's somebody out there right now that could benefit from what you know and being able to teach them and then I went from there to we went to high school do you remember when did you ever have those world's famous chocolate bars that you sold for yes okay yes. so one day I ate one, it was a dollar and I didn't have a dollar to pay for it. So like, what am I gonna do? So I remember that there was 12 pieces to that chocolate bar. So what I did is that I went at recess time, broke it off and sold it on the playground for 10 cents a piece. So I got my dollar back and then I got 20 cents a bar. And then the next day, the people say, do you have candy? Do you have chocolate bar? And I did it the next day, the next day throughout the whole campaign. That's what I did at recess was go sell chunks of chocolate bars. Kids had 10 cents, but they didn't have a dollar. And so I won the prize with some of the most candy bars. And then I made 20 cent profit on each, each project. So ever since then, I've been doing different things, whether it's in college. Um, I went to USC with majoring in marketing. And I lived in the Marina del Rey. And I would see the gentlemen leave on the weekends their boats and they'd be messy and all that good stuff. And I said, well, I created a Marina mermaid service. And so we had these cute little t-shirts that had Marina and the mermaid on it, but it's M-A-I-D. And I went to some of the other kids, the other students and said, hey, during your breaks, do you want to come and make some extra money? So they would come to my apartment to get a little blue bucket and they um, would um, you know, go to the boats and, and then they would clean it. And they got $15, I got $15 and $5 went towards expenses. You know, so we advertised in the local newspaper and that went really well until one day one lady was smoking on the boat and got the cushion on fire fire. And we did have to get it replaced, but they said if they wouldn't report us unless we got insurance and all that good stuff. And at that age at 18 years old with these multi-million dollar yachts, it was not feasible. So I always said I was gonna go back to it, but I haven't as yet. You know, so it's this business after business, um, modeling school and agencies, um, 
you know, to the Denver Office of Real Estate since 1989. I started as an agent and then a broker and then an investor. And that's when I realized that women needed, you know, and could um, build their portfolios with real estate. And a lot of them had the money, had the credit, had the um, qualifications. They just didn't know how. So I started meeting in my home on Sundays and the second Sunday. And I said, I was going to tell women about my journey because I had at that time I was married and divorced with two boys. And um, then they started coming and every month, every month it was the second Sunday started growing to the point that people were bringing their lawn chairs because it was just, you know, that much, there was that many people. So we said, okay, now I need to do something with this. So I created a company called An Empowered Woman because we felt that after everyone would leave, they feel so empowered. And so Empowered Women went, we went to country clubs and we had different themes every second Sunday where we said we motivated, we educated, and we inspired women professionals and entrepreneurs. And that was back in like 2007. So it wasn't all these groups and organizations around then. And I realized that women had the ability, but they didn't have the connected. They didn't have the community. They didn't have the sisterhood in business. You know, they had enough different areas. So that grew. And then when the, um, you know, the market tanked, I lost a lot of real estate. Um, and but kept the power woman going. But when I came back, I said, okay, now I need to build my portfolio again. And um, how am I going to do that? And I wanted to work in a home, you know, and as opposed to going to, you know, the office and so forth, because I've been doing that for years. So I said, I just want to live where I work, work where I live anywhere in the world, because then my, by that time, my sons had grew up and they were out of the house. I was empty nester. I was single as an entrepreneur. And so I didn't, I looked around for, at, for co-working spaces and like there was a WeWork and some other places, but that was still dealing with traffic. It was dealing with, you know, parking. It was, you know, being distracted by going in and going out. And then I looked around for co-living spaces. I thought, well, maybe that would be work. And there was too many people. A lot of them had a lot of people or there was, you know, a lot of traffic, a lot of transition. And so I said, okay, I'm going to create something like that. So we started acquiring luxury style homes and we designed the bedrooms to be live work suites. So women can live there full-time, part-time, or as a drop-in. So it's specifically for women professionals and entrepreneurs, because that's my community, that's my tribe. And um, we have our and the houses have guest houses uh, that has offices, it has a studio for podcasts and videos, it has classrooms, um, the dining rooms convert to conference room, the living room converts to event rooms, and this beautiful estates that women can live and work in. And we have locations all around. And then we also represent women who have guest houses and guest rooms and vacation rentals. Because a lot of them say, well, I really don't want to be on Airbnb or some of the other places. I want to control who comes into my house. And they prefer for a woman to come in and, and they can now become friends. They can become clients. They can become partners. A lot of uh, women have united that way. So we represent, we have our signature homes and then we have guest houses where we market their properties. We don't I like get, it. I like it. It's a lot of information. We have talkers today. That's a <laughs> wonderful thing. We have talkers today. I always get nervous, especially when I don't have five people because I'm like, oh my God, I have to carry the show. And if I don't talk, I'm going to get one word answers. But I see that's not a problem today. Desiree, I love what you're saying. I'm going to come back to you, but I want to go ahead and introduce my <laughs> guest, the wonderful, amazing Miss Deborah Ann Spence. Deborah's life has been a series of big obstacles that she has moved out of her way with fierce energy and excitement. Deborah is an award-winning real estate broker in Philadelphia and the surrounding suburbs. Born and raised in New York, Deborah attended Hofstra University and graduated with a degree in business administration. Good morning, Deborah. How are you? Good morning. I am well. Nice to meet you all. Thank you for inviting me onto your show. And um, my uh, I don't have such a diverse uh, experience as, as an entrepreneur. I started late in life. Most of my years, I spent 10 years in and out of hospital. I suffered from a mental condition and it had me debilitated. But um, at some point I decided that that wouldn't be the rest of my life, that I was gonna make a, a shift in my mentality and, and use that as a, um, as a springboard to something else and have a better future for myself and my children. And um, I stumbled into Philadelphia wanting to change my life and met a mechanic. He told me about real estate and how a vacant lot that I saw as an eyesore was something that was uh, a million dollar, if not more property. So I looked into it 
um, was intrigued, got my license and um, had an amazing first year, I sold, uh, listed 63 homes, um, sold half of them the next year, the same thing. Then I became a real estate broker, started my own company. And now I'm training and mentoring and giving scholarships to individuals that like myself was on a more um, no one was interested in kind of like, you know, mental health is considered something that's lower than even someone that comes out of prison because you, you know, people that come out of prison, they get a celebration, they get a coming home party. You come out of the mental hospital, it's like, uh, you know, she's a little wacko, stay away. And so, um, um, and, and that's okay. I mean, it's just a lot of education involved in teaching a community that it's not something that should be treated like that. But I'm using my experience um, helping others that are on the margins of society that we, we throw away and say, you know what, they'll never be successful. They'll never accomplish anything in their life. And I use myself an ex as an example. I can become successful. Anyone can. Um, I wrote a book about it. It's called Burning Desire. Um, it's on audible.com. You can buy it in, uh, on Amazon as an ebook or as a physical book. And um, uh, that's really all. I, I, don't, I don't have that much to offer other than that, um, you know, I empowered myself and now I'm empowering others. Well, you know what? First of all, we're going to rebuke that statement that you don't have that much to offer because you do. Just your <laughs> journey and just your authenticity is amazing. The fact that you went from where you were to where you are today and you're reaching back, I think that's amazing. I think so many people, and they may not have gone through what you've gone through. They may have gone through something similar, but they get to a certain point and then they forget about other people. They forget about helping people. And I love the fact that everybody here today is focused on helping other people, supporting other people, being there for other people, teaching entrepreneurs. I think that's amazing, Deborah. Now you're focused on real estate, but yeah. what was that journey like for you personally? Because you talked about mental illness and then you said, okay, I'm going to take this step. Were there people around you who said, no, real estate, that's too much for you. Don't try it. You got too much on your plate. You know, with your illness, you're not supposed to be doing things. How did, what was that process like? And how did you continue? Always going to be naysayers. Anytime you want to change your situation and, and become something different, it makes not it makes us uncomfortable, but it also makes other people around us really uncomfortable because when you change, then they're changing the way they have to see you and that makes them uncomfortable. So the naysayers I try not to listen to. And what I did was I focused, you know, I had like a narrow focus. I, I blocked out, you know, the naysayers, my family and friends even, and I put myself in a box and I said in this box for the next two, three years, um, I'm going to stay in this box and not come out of it and change my life. And no matter what anyone said, they knocked on the box and said, come out, you can't do this. I wouldn't listen. I just kept focused. I said I had a narrow focus and I either was going to change my life or I wasn't. But at least I can say at the end of the day, when I look in the eyes of my children, I can say, I tried. I tried to change. I tried to help you. I tried to help others. I tried to uplift my family, my community and I fail, but so far so good, you know, it's working. Yes, yes, and it's going, you're going to keep going because you have that entrepreneur winning spirit, and I just believe that if you would have given up, you probably would have given up years ago. I don't think it's in you. I want to go over to Desiree right quick. When you hear Deborah and her journey, what are your thoughts? My thoughts is that, you know, it's like that just proves that there's no excuse. There's no excuse for anything. I mean, she's a perfect example of someone, you know, that like she said, that people look at and say they can't do it. And um, and she did. And it's just about, it's about the mind. And the people ask, like, well, what does what breeds success and what are the characteristics of a successful person? And it's that same focus she talked about. You have to make a decision and like, you have to decide this is the road I'm going to take and just go that road. There'll always be different side lanes, there'll always be detours, but you just have to get your eye on the ball and go for that. And she's a perfect example of that. And it also says there's so many people that say, I can't. It just, you know, just shows like she's the person that needs to get afraid of stand in front of them and say, you can't, you're telling me that you can't do this because people have everything going for them, you know, and have all the different amenities or the different tools or techniques or funds, whatever it is, and they're not able to succeed. Look how many houses she sold in her first year. So, I mean, that's, a, that's something that she had a gift that was just being 
you know, that was just being smothered by whatever it was. And now she's able to do it. Look, look at the result of that. Look how many lives she's changed as a result of being able to sell these people their house in a dream house. So if she wasn't in the market, if she wasn't there, they may not have gotten it the way that she, because I'm sure she tried and she, the way that she pulled herself out of her situation, she pulled everyone else that she touched out of their situation. And so that's the kind of person that will, it's unstoppable. And as she said, as far as being empowered, that is truly the, you know, an empowered woman. And whatever she decides to do and however she decides to do it. And she talks about her children. You know, that's the example that every parent needs to leave for the children. That's all that you need to show them is that tenacity, that focus, that desire, and the win from there. And it's not about the money. You know, I mean, I'm sure that hopefully she's compensated coolly. It's about the fact that she had a goal and she's able to do it and that for anything, whether it's a goal for a good marriage, whether it's a goal for a good business, whether it's a goal for a good family, that is a gift that she has. And I'm so glad that she found it. And whoever, you know, even triggered that or sparked that, she should be thanking them forever. If it's, even if it's just internally, that's the gift that she has and she has it and willing to give it to others. So I think it's amazing. Absolutely. More. <laughs> Absolutely. So Deborah, when you hear Desiree speak about your journey, what are your thoughts? Um, well, I appreciate that. I, I love that, you know, you recognize how hard the journey was and, and, and you understand it. Um, fundamentally, you understand it from the core, how hard it is to pull yourself out from, you know, the edge of society and to accomplish something so great. So I appreciate that you saying that. Thank you. So you don't always, as females, get encouragement from, from other females. You know, unfortunately, um, sometimes we like to knock each other down and, and say, oh, you know, you were lucky or, you know, you had this and you had that. Mm -hmm. But when someone acknowledges um, your journey and how hard and difficult it was and, and, and admires that, it really feels good inside. You get that little warm tingle. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are admirable. Because I can live another day. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a journey either way. And for those who have extra obstacles, it's, uh, um, you know, it's like awesome. It's amazing. And you just put that hat on and you ride with that. You know, don't ever let anyone take you off that horse. You I know, appreciate that. Thank you yeah. so much. You, you, you've earned it. Yes. Dara, have people tried to, you know, block you or block your, your shy? Oh, yes. <laughs> California, because, you know, I'm from the Midwest, a small town. Um, well, you, I don't know if you heard of South Bend, Indiana. So yes. I'm from, yeah, that's, it's very you know center there's not much to do unless you branch out so coming here has definitely taught me about the naysayers and the people that really truly like don't care because I'm always used to you know my little small crowd and but it it, it hardened me and it made made me want to reach out to people more and go through through their minds because I can feel a certain way that I want to feel, but you never know how other people feel and what they go through, which is just really inspiring sometimes. <laughs> I want to go yeah. back to what you just said though, Dara, because I want to be clear when you say it hardened me, sometimes we can be hardened to the fact that we no longer show empathy or compassion and we don't give that to other people, but then we can also harden our skin and have a tough skin. So the things that people say to us no longer affect us. We can, you know, brush our shoulders off, go on with our life, which um, were you saying? I was talking about more of my skin because I, I definitely have a sweet spirit um, because I'm such a giver. It, that can go too far sometimes if you don't stop and think about yourself and what you're giving because sometimes it's okay that you can't give because you still got to have something for you to be able to give to someone else. So really it was just my skin. It, it toughened me up to be able to say no. Um, I had a really big problem as a young and a young age uh, trying to say no so yeah it's it definitely put me in perspective and plus like you know I'm only 28 so I still have a lot of time to like learn some stuff but I wanted to branch out and go somewhere that'll just teach me a lot quicker I like I like to take the hard route you know I feel like I'm the one who rips the band-aid off when you know you got to pull the band-aid <laughs> so that's kind of like what I meant more of it, like my skin. 
Mm, no, that's powerful. 28 and you out here entrepreneur, but you've been doing this for a long time since you were young. I, I love it. I love the journey. I love the enthusiasm. Coming to Los Angeles cannot be easy. Los Angeles, we have so many people here um, going for the same goal. But what I like about what you're doing is the support group aspect. So again, we spoke to Deborah. Deborah's, you know, on this journey. You, with your support group, what would you say to her? What would you offer? Well, I know what it's like to go through any, well, I don't have any type of disabilities or anything, but I know what it's like to have mental health issues. Um, I was definitely diagnosed with uh, bipolar depression when I was younger. And um, I have a lot of anxiety from a lot of the internal pain I go through. So with my space and just letting her know, I would just let you know, like, if you ever need somebody to talk to, you can talk to me. You know, there's a group of us that are be coming together and being able to just share the experiences. Cause I, if I read you my diary, you'd be like, <laughs> wow, <laughs> you went through that. And it's like, you know, but what, what's good is that you never know what you hear from other people. Like hearing your story, I was so excited. I was like, oh my goodness. Like she'd be perfect for my group. You know, you, you can come in and you can, express yourself cry do whatever you need to do because sometimes those emotions and getting those out um can put you in a different place and you'll be able to really just feel happier about what happened to you and what's going on and you'll be able to speak more about it with so much confidence that nothing will be able to stop you it doesn't matter if everybody turned their heads but i know in my group will have space for you to know that these people will have your back. If anything, I will, because I know what it's like to go through stuff like that. You don't know what to say to people. You don't know how to share because they don't understand. And that's okay. That is okay because there's people who do. They just don't know because they have to hear your voice and hear, you know, what you go through. So you definitely, you got a friend. <laughs> Do you think that mental illness is, is such a taboo? Do you think they'll ever be able to overcome that? Especially in the African-American community, it's looked on in, in a negative light and you know, others are, are encouraged not to seek professional help and not to say how you feel and just you know, be strong and, and hold it inside and don't talk about it. Do you think it'll ever change? Um, I feel like a better question would be, do you want it to change? Because, you know, I, I, it, it's all about mindset. And I'm just now like starting to really try to read more books about, you know, really centering your mind. But I, I think if we just think differently about it, that yes, we will be able to change. It, it can happen. It's just that we're so, because of like everything that we went through in life, and I'll just mean anything and everything, we've categorized so many things to the point where we're just kind of like stuck in thinking mental health issue is just this particular thing, but who knows? Like, that's why you get people who sometimes have autism and can draw like really well, you know, you, you never know anything. So it's like, if you try to step more into the shoes of people who do go through this, because I have really bad mental health issues. I mean, I, I was really depressed, like trying to kill myself left and right as I was younger. So I definitely understand when it's like you have those thoughts and it's hard to get out of that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I believe if we think differently about it, like it's not okay to think those thoughts, but they're there. We can't not acknowledge it that we're we can't hide it anymore and i've noticed like that's what my issue was i used to pack stuff away it made me end up having like a really smart mouth i got really debated with people mm -hmm. and now i use that drive to um stand my ground you know i'm a very peaceful person but let your voice be heard if something feels wrong let it be heard let it be let let your thoughts out like you know it's okay because at the end of the day you never know what other people are thinking you never know how they're feeling they might just be they might have been really well at putting it away more than you so yes yeah. I really think that it, it would change we just have to think differently about it that's all 
I agree. I hear what you're saying, Dara. But I also believe that as a society, there are so many people who are changing their views on mental illness, especially over the last year. During this global pandemic, one of the things that we realize is that we're all a little anxious. We're all a little depressed. We're all a little stressed. Our norm is no longer norm. Is no, Our lives are no longer the way we they were, you know, a few months ago. And so we're all adjusting that. I have mental illness in my family. And so I, I've seen people suffer from, from different things, but I've also seen the way the society changes or adapts to those people change. So I think the more we talk about it, the more we have these conversations, the better off it will be. I also, you know, cause I have a political interest. I'm running for Senate in 2024. One of the things that that's important to me, thank you, is that I believe to a certain extent, mental illness is more of a symptom. It's a symptom of what people are going through. And when you have a society with so much homelessness or fear of homelessness, when you have a society with so much unemployment or the fear of unemployment that creates a society with a lot of anxiety. That's one of the reasons, and it's not all about mental illness, but I love what Desiree is doing because she's physically and actually taking people and improving their situations as opposed to just leaving them out there to just stress about it and be anxious about it. Wouldn't you say, Desiree? Yes, absolutely. And the thing is, uh, to your question, uh, Deborah, I think that it's changing over time. And the reason what's making it change is that people are becoming outspoken about it, like yourself. Because I know there's a couple other, I forget the actresses, I was trying to think of their name that has a show and she talks about it. So Tahara Jansen, I think there's- So Raji P. Henson. Exactly. Yes. And so when we realize that so many people are suffering so, so many different things, like the way you show up, Dara, I wouldn't have known. Deborah, I'm sure you show up as a professional real estate agent. People don't know. So, so many people show up, they're able to show up just like people that are closet alcoholics and things that's like they show up and they perform and they right. do it. People don't know. But when people start talking about it, it makes it okay. It's like, okay, yeah. Okay. Like it's that release of like, okay, so I'm not that different. It's, I think everybody, like you said, you know, um, Sharifa, is that, you know, at certain times are going to be experiencing or feeling or have the symptoms of some mental illness. I mean, we all feel like we're going crazy sometimes, right? And so it just really depends. I think now that people are talking about it, it's lightened it up. If people see that people are excelling in spite of, um, then it just actually is going to change over time. So take, there'll always be some people that will never, you know, but that a lot of people just realizing that again, it's not like you said, it's not necessarily conditions can contribute to it as well. Some of them sure is, you know, when you're born, but other con con conditions can contribute to it and it can be temporary. And, but more importantly, you can work through it. Like you've demonstrated, you can work through it and people that go out there. And I think what we're doing is that realize that people, you know, after this, especially after the COVID, we, started this a couple of years ago in 2017, right after people started you know, losing all the real estate and they got, kind of gotten after that recession, because um, that was my experience. But um, people now still want a good life, but they don't necessarily want the full responsibility and the full budget for it. So they're able to pay one fee and live in a beautiful home or a beautiful place or space and enjoy the freedom and flexibility and not be you know, tied down and Way down with the responsibilities of a home. You know, that's just part of your life. But that freedom and flexibility is huge right now. Mm -hmm. we do yeah, this. that's a really good concept. What cities are you located in? Right now we we were oh we were we were in 22 different cities prior to COVID. So some people have scaled down, some people have had to sell their house or they have you know lease out their house differently. So right now we're in San Diego. Um, we have in Los Angeles and um, Westlake Village, we actually have someone in Jamaica, we have uh, a couple of Florida. New Jersey. So we're slowly bringing like this Sunday, tomorrow, tonight, I'm going to Vegas. Uh, we have been launching some in Vegas. We have every second Sunday of the month. And here's when my plug comes in. Uh, we do, we interview women. We have a program called Let's Talk Success and it's a magazine. And we interview women on their story, their challenges, their victories, and their secrets to success. And so, and then we're doing it in different cities. So this tonight we go to Vegas and the woman that we're interviewing, her name is Anna Jackson. You definitely should tune into it because she goes from food stamps to millions of dollars in beauty schools. And then she took that partly that money from the beauty schools into real estate. So she's one of the largest real estate investors in Detroit city from commercial buildings, to houses, to churches, to everything. And she built a legacy. So her son and her daughter will be there and her granddaughter will chime in and set what it feels like to be having a family business and be able to do it collectively. Like you are in real estate, being able to get your children involved in it. I was in real estate. My kids got involved in it. 
My son had his license by the time he was 18 and so forth. So, you know, really being able to see what you're doing in the legacy and just, and move past it. Don't let it be, it's just like, it's just something about, it's this one thing about you. It's not you, you right. know, just so like you. So let me ask you this, um, Desiree, didn't mean to cut you off, but I tend to. Um, <laughs> you interview all of these successful people, and I do a lot of interviews, so I began to see patterns. Do you see any particular patterns or success strategies that are common between the people that you interview? Yes, I see. The pattern I see is um, focus. Like, you mm -hmm. know, like you yes. got to get a ball and get your eye on that ball. And you can't let anything or anyone, I mean, like I started this new business at 62 years old. So everybody says you're crazy and I needed money. You're to 62? I'm 65 now. 65? So. Oh my goodness. You look good, girl. What is, I need some of your water. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up over the years, but no. Um, and people say, hey, you're black, you're a woman, you're single, you don't have any money, you know, because I was, I needed investors because real estate is, you know, heavy lifting. So um, it's capital intensive. And so no one's going to invest in you. And why don't you just retire like other people in their 60s would do? And so I heard that a lot. And it's like, okay, I can't listen to you. <laughs> I, this is my last win. You know, I, I needed like one more, I had one more multi-million. I want to build in this company to sell. So I okay. said, I I've had the companies before, but I've never sold it. So I want to be able to exit saying I had a company and I sold it for whatever that magic number is. So, um, yeah, so that's one. So I just had to, at night, I would um, take my iPad and listen to the NCR, the show called How I Built This, mm -hmm. and I would listen to their stories. And I think like, oh my goodness, like if they can go through that, that was my motivation. And then I put it on my pillow. And then in the morning, I'd listen to another story. That was like my caffeine for the day that was that I put me to sleep to rest and it was put me up to go so many times again I find stories and when you're talking and hear what people go through as an entrepreneur it's like so powerful so the focus and that's what they all had and tenacity you have yes. to, you have to be tenacious about it and like you said you've got to be like you know people will talk about you you'll lose friends you can lose time you'll lose you know money you'll lose sleep you'll lose a lot of things you have to be so tenacious about it that's all worth it to you and again it's not always about the monetary goal it's just about this is a dream this is a desire you have and you're not going to let it die with you um so that and then also many of them majority of them still has a kind heart they still especially the women i find that they always have a kind heart to give back and once i interview they always you know really want to give back because they appreciate you know um being able to accomplish it. They know what the journey is like. So those are the few the things that, you know, they are just disciplined. You know, yes. I, don't have to, I don't have to be told what to do in the morning. I know what I need to do. I don't have to be told, you know, I'm disciplined. You know, I don't do laundry during the day. I don't do certain things in the day. I don't talk to my friends. I may take a break, but take a break that I can talk to someone, but otherwise I'm, you know, disciplined, you know, to do that yes. disciplined to some point. Yeah, yeah, so I also see that as, as I, when I heard you say focus, the same word, different word came to mind for me was sacrifice. You know, they sacrifice a lot to get, they keep focus, that single-minded focus, like you said, where they can, they don't have to go to happy hour. They don't have to do this because they're focused on their goal and they're willing to make sacrifices now for the future and the goals. So Deborah, how do you remain focused? How do you make these sacrifices for your, your business and for yourself? Um, I write down my goals every day, every morning. Um, I even write down my affirmation. So where I am today and where I want to be in the future, I write that down as if I'm in the future already. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, and I, that's how I, I maintain focus. So if I write down that I want to take my company, you know, public, or I am the, the head of a, a, I'm the CEO of a, a public company, um, when it, within the day, I can't just slack off and watch TV because somebody that has a company that's going public, they don't just sit down and watch, you know, housewives shows and, <laughs> shows. you know, I think of my life as my own reality show. I'm the star and yeah. you know, this is what I need to accomplish every day. And, you know, scene one, scene two, scene three. And if I want to be public and, and, and I write that in the morning, I know I need to do all of these steps until way into the end of the night um, in order to accomplish that. And um, that's how I keep my focus. You know what, Deborah? I'm telling you, you, you are amazing because 
I'm sitting here going, and I, I keep saying this to myself, I am going to take Ash Sharifa public. And then I say to myself, like, nobody says that. Nobody sits around and goes, make this a public company. And then the first thing that comes out of your mouth is, I'm going to take in for a Black woman to say, I want to take this company public. That's why the rest of the world is going, no, she's crazy. She can't do that <laughs> because nobody is, you know what I mean? It, yep. Oh, I thought that was just so, Daryl, talk to us. What are your thoughts? <laughs> I, I love it. I love it because you have so much inspiration and you can see it in your smile. So I, I definitely think that that's a good process for you. you. You know, everybody has their own ways to be able to stay focused. And I know one of my ways is because I, I have issues with staying focused. I have ADD. So half of the time my brain's all over the place and I can't stay focused. But I know one thing I do is I consistency. Um, I wanted to get up early at one point in time, but it took me like months of just setting the alarm at the same time every morning. And finally I started, but you know, that I think it's I think it's great to have your special ways to stay focused. Yeah. Love it. She, Love it. she calls it special ways. I like that your <laughs> special ways to stay focused. Now you're 28. I'll be 45 on the 31st of March. I'd invited everyone in the world to my birthday party. So I hope you ladies come. But I tell people, if they would have had ADHD when I was in school, they would have diagnosed me with it. They would have said, Sharifa has ADD because I was all over the place. My mind was always going. I was walking around. I was talking to people. And so a doctor, clinical psychologist has not diagnosed me with it, but I still use certain techniques that help me and that is one of the things that I've learned and it may not work for everyone is I don't try to force myself to do certain things when I'm not in a focus mode. You know, I allow myself to feel or be whatever it is that I'm feeling at that moment and then kind of go with it as opposed to get it adamant and say, Sharifa, you have to do this this way. You have to do this now. You have to, you know, because I think we put so, especially as women, we put so much pressure on ourselves to be a certain way. And if we're not that way, then and it's usually ourselves, not other people saying that it's not okay. And so I just love the fact that you're accepting of yourself and who, who you are. And we talked about mental illness earlier. And one of the things that I always talk about is that studies have shown that even people with mental illness, as long as there isn't any stressors in their life, they can live perfectly happy lives. But it's when that divorce comes in, that job loss comes in, that betrayal comes in, and all of a sudden their world is upended that they go into these spirals that they may not be able to control. So I don't know how some way on Friday, Happy Friday, we got into mental illness, but <laughs> the conversation always goes where well, you also go. have a, a daily routine. And so like what I learned from being in a mental hospital so many times is that everything is set on a schedule. So you mm -hmm. wake up, you have your shower, then you get meds, then you get breakfast, and then you have group session, then they have like smoke session, then lunch, then group session. What is, what is smoke session? Well, when people have the smoke cigarettes, they, they oh, take okay. it inside to go smoke. Okay. And, and, and I realized that when any time, like if lunch was late or if there was a new person on the ward and they didn't have the keys to take people out to go smoke, or if the meds were late or something like that, then Johnny is swinging off of the light and, and Jane is cutting you know, her wrist and stuff like that. But when everything is on time, if they say, look, this is the time and everybody is like on, you know, in sequence on time, then there's really no issues on the ward. So I, I, I internalized that. And when you know, I got back into my own life, I created my own routine because I realized that that will keep me focused. If I was to, like, if somebody pulls me off of the, my routine, I, I get uncomfortable because it, it makes, you know, I'm just, you know, the wires in the brain is just focused on a routine, this, this, and that. And sometimes I have to explain that to people. Like if the meeting says it's going to be over at one and it start at 12, it has to start that time. Cause then I get uncomfortable. And if one o'clock comes and you're still talking, that I have to leave because I already set in my mind that it's over at one o'clock. So you have to share that with other people, but um, it's also just about being routine so that when things do happen in life and stuff happens in life, like my mom, 
you know, she got really sick three years ago and, and had to get her leg amputated. My oh, niece wow. had autism, then diabetes and had to go into a nursing home. But I was still able to main, maintain my mental health by sticking to my routine. Now, another book, I guess, good for that. We have a book club and we just finished the, the Miracle Morning. So mm-hmm. it also speaks to that. And it's a really nice way. Like you talked about your meditation, you know, things like that type, your Miracle Morning, being able to create your routine and then start your day that way and the difference that it makes and the impact that it makes on your day and how very, most of your successful people like the, you know, the Oprah's and the Charles Branson's and all that, that's what they do. Then another book that we're reading now is called The Five Second Rule. And it's by Mel Gibson. And it's funny thing, cause like when you, um, she, she says like when you're to do something or not do something, count five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. And then that's to get up and go or, or to get and to do something, you know, when you're procrastinating for those who procrastinate, you know, that they need that. Okay, that's you just do that. So she started off with the alarm clock. You know, she would you know, t- t- turn the alarm clock off, turn the alarm clock off and to the point where she said, okay, I just started saying five, when it count to five. And then when that time went again to one, I just got up and got up, you know? So, you know, it, I, it, that's to, to support what you're saying, Deborah, is that, you know, everybody, believe it or not, has to have somewhere, somehow in their life, either business or personal, that they gotta go. Otherwise you are. And especially as an entrepreneur, it's really hard because you've got the freedom to flow. You know, we are creating our own bosses. Nobody tells us where we have to be at a certain day or time. We tell ourselves that. So I implement different activities like the calls and my masterminds and things like that. That's where my, you know, structure. So I know that I have to show up and be on time for that you know, and do those things. Otherwise, you know, it's constant. It's not something you do once and you're done. It's like not, you don't get your nails done and you're done. It's a, you get it done consistently and you constantly have to create and stay on top and keep refining your routine and making sure that people that are around you know that's what it is too, so they don't interrupt it. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Dara? That's really cool because um, I'm glad you said that because within my group um, uh, with Yellow's Remedy Solutions, uh, one of my things I created is like safe words. Um, and I, I thought of this process because a lot of times when stuff happens to us, uh, which goes to everything we were all seeing, like we create these spaces for us. So like our routines, like some people got to get up and, and have their smoothie in the mornings and, and stuff like that. So with the safe words, when people come in, I want people to use them when they can't be expressive, like if, if they're angry or no, I'm going to say, say my favorite space, uh, safe word uh, or phrase is, I don't know, because I use that a lot when, and that's my indication when I know I'm feeling kind of depressed and down. I say, I don't know to everything. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know my name. I don't know the day <laughs> or anything, you know? So like I, these safe words can help indicate what, <laughs> to communicate with other people, especially if you don't know what to say. I feel like that's a big issue. It's like, we don't know how to express ourselves. And usually other people don't understand like what we're saying. So um, that what, what you were saying, Desiree, really inspired me to like, this is gonna be good for people. <laughs> And it's so funny that you say that because my safe word is like, um, yes, like yeah, last night we were, I had going to Vegas, I had to order mics and stands and my fiance kept saying, well, do you want this one and that one and da, 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 da. I kept saying, yes. I said, this order, yes, yes, yes. And I, and I finally had to say, whatever you're going to ask me right now, because I'm tired and I want to go to bed. It's like, yes. <laughs> You know, and I do the same thing with restaurants. I'm going to eat this and this and this. It's like, because I'm hungry, whatever you show up with, whatever you ask me, the answer is going to be yes. So just choose it. You know, so like, yes, is my safe word. That means like, I'm done. Whatever you want, I'm good. Yeah. It's like, I'm done with that. Yeah. And, and that can you have to know yourself that way too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah really does. Are you going to say something else? You know that too. It's more important that the people around you know. Okay, if you say, I don't know, that means like, okay, she's not, I'm not going to get any other answer from her. So, <laughs> so let me just move on. Yes, I love it. All these different safe words, different knowing yourselves. I don't even know what my word is. Well, I, I mean, ask it you, what's your Sharifa? What do you think your word is like when you like, like, what's your safe word? I don't know. Maybe it's not, I don't know, but I don't know what that is. I have to <laughs> thought because usually I'm not stumped. But um, 
I let me go back to something Dara said earlier when she was talking about um, saying no and, and learning how to say no. I think as women, we we have to learn that no is a complete answer, that it's enough to be able to say no. And so I don't really have a safe word, I think, because I'm, a, I'm a, I live in a very safe bubble, a safe world. And my friends who know me, they, they know that um, I'm the kind of person that just says whatever I have to say. I'm very in touch with what I'm feeling my dad and I have this conversation all the time about the use of anger, you know, and I believe in righteous anger. I believe that so many people look at what's going on in the world and they don't have any type of emotion. So I like to have emotions and feelings and control it, not be violent, but also just be really in touch with what I'm feeling. So for me, to even say, I don't know, would be like a rare thing because I take great pride in, in saying, being direct. I know that did not answer your question in any form or fashion, but I was trying to talk it through. It just, it just didn't work. It just didn't work. This is great. I love this conversation today. Dara, what were you gonna say? Oh no, I was just gonna say that's okay because another one of my safe words, uh, especially if nobody has any issues, is melody. Um, I, I use that because normally when people listen to music, they, you don't listen to music to feel sad or upset. Usually you wanna play that song or that, that noise, whatever. It can be any type of melody that makes you happy. So when people come in, you know, they can say, I'm feeling really melody today. You know, that we all know that they're feeling good. They're feeling great and they can pass the energy on. So yeah, I mean, you don't always have to have a safe word. You know, it's the, it's your energy that somebody might need. The safe words are always for, the harder times when you when you don't know and when you have more confidence you you can sp spill that out through your energy and then that alone can just help people like sit up more and think and be at least have that first thought process to be able to start thinking okay what can I do next because those little steps are really important so <laughs> no, but you were speaking. You helped the sister out because I think if anything, my safe word would probably be exactly what you said, energy. Like I'm really big on energy. energy. And so I may meet someone, I go, mm, I'm not feeling their energy. And I don't know specifically what it is about them. Or I may meet someone and go, you know what? Like all of you, I love your energy. I love the way you come across. So that affects my mood. It makes me feel like I want to be in a better mood because you guys are up and excited and smiling. So I'm really big on energy and I'm really big on feeling something. And that's why I love my life because earlier, like 20, 25, 30 years ago, when I would get a job and I'm like, you know, I'm not feeling that job. I'm not feeling it. I just, I can't go. And people were like, Sharifa, you can't just not go to a job because you're not feeling it. I'm like, oh yeah, I can. And, but now people are used to me because if I do not feel something, I cannot be moved. You will not move me. You will not change my mind. You can't, you know, motivate me, inspire me, badger me, debo me, bully me. I'm not moving. And I have to feel it. I have to feel the energy of whatever it is. So I think I'm going to use energy and feeling it as my safe word. I'm not feeling it. But you know what? I am feeling this show today. Now we are coming down to the last few minutes of the show. And what I love to do at the end of every show is just simply allow my guests the opportunity to speak directly to the audience, to everyone who is watching this show live, as well as everyone who is watching in the archives and let them know what you want them to take away from your appearance here today. And we're gonna start with you, Deborah. Okay, well, I'm glad all of you tuned in. I appreciate you listening to us talk. And as I say, sometimes listen to me blabber on. Um, <laughs> I appreciate that. I just like to leave with you. Um, if you're interested in knowing more about my journey, uh, pick up a copy of my book called Burning Desire. Or listen, it to, listen to it on audible.com. Um, it's Burning Desire, a true motivational story about how I beat the odds on my first year in real estate. And um, my name is Deborah Ann Spence. I also like for you to let others know if they're in the Philadelphia or the surrounding suburbs, if they're interested in a career in real estate, I'm offering a scholarship program and it could be anybody. Um, you know, if you don't have a car, you don't have a computer, you just tapping out on your phone, that's fine. Um, we cover all of the expenses of getting licensed, taking a class, um, um, taking a class, getting licensed, the MLS fees, the dues, um, the first year expenses, 
and um, just reach out the, to the, my website is localrealestatejobs.com. Wow. Okay. I, I don't say wow too often, but you are the lady who said, I don't know what I have to offer. And you just gave <laughs> away the house. You gave scholarships. And I'm like, wait a minute, weren't you just talking about the way it works in the mental institution and being on the ward? And now you, I, this is amazing. I love it. I love it. I love it. The only thing I don't like, I'm a little be a little bit, you know, me for a minute. Callie, Callie, we got to get some of that. I need, I'm going to sign up for a class. I'm in Long Beach, California. The people in Philadelphia <laughs> have all the fun. How do I sign up for this scholarship so I can do real estate? <laughs> Deborah laughing. I'm serious. That's okay. That's okay. We're not going to hold it against you that I'm you don't. I'm sorry. I don't have a license in California. I'm going to need you to fix that. Okay, <laughs> fix that, and then so I can change my life. I need you to change my life. Okay, well, you'll be senator, so you know the next female senator, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> true. True. I give you that. I give you that, Deborah. Good save. Good save. Yeah. Sarah, what do you have for us? Well, I'm Sarah. sorry, Sarah. What do you have for us? Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Yes. Uh, well. <laughs> Come join. I, I feel like a lot of my uh, attributes come from my energy because I've just always been trying to be a positive person. Um, you can find me on Instagram. It is peace be with you. Literally, you know, peace be with you, um, except you is spelled U zero U. And you can find the information on my remedy group. Um, it is a support group, not therapy. I'm not a therapist. We're just here to share the love and uplift each other. And a yellow moment of movements. You can find anything about me with yellow, anything, yellow vanilla, whatever. <laughs> Thanks for tuning like that. Peace be with you. It's so funny because this morning I was looking at my Instagram and it said, peace be with you, followed you. And I was like, okay, I don't know who that is, but that's cool. And then well, it stood out to me because people follow me, but it stood out to me because being raised Muslim, like that's, that's what we always um, end with the closing, may peace be with you, may peace be upon you. So when it, when I saw peace be with you, I was like, Hmm, interesting. <laughs> Maybe I'll learn more. I guess I got the answer to my question. Thank you for that follow. I have to follow. Now I have to follow you back. You see, that's pressure. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. Desiree, what do you have for us today? Um, I just want to um, invite everyone to join us on Sunday. It's totally free. I think you'll really, really, really be um, inspired in that work. It's go to, go to homework.com and that's H-O-M-W-O-R-K. There's no E in it. So it's H-O-M-W-O-R-K.com, homework.com. And, and you'll be able to log in and you'll be able, if you opt in, you'll get an invitation to Sunday because it's really, really, really amazing um, to hear what other women are doing and how they're doing it and to be able to have the conversation and just you know, stay connected. But I want to leave everyone with the, uh, the thought of never let anyone or anything dim the light that shines within. Mm, powerful words shine within powerful words powerful words to not only end a show but to end this week i'm so grateful i enjoyed this show i'm pretty sure because we had quite a few comments today people tuning in and and the comments say absolutely amazing people enjoyed this show so definitely would love for you ladies to check out the comments because you have a lot of people there who are rooting for you and supporting you but i want to thank you for being the guest on today's episode of the roundtable talk show and i especially want to thank everyone who tuned in to watch this show live as well as everyone who is watching it in the archives just because you didn't catch the show live does not mean you're not important because we still need your support we still need you to go ahead and share the show but i'll always ask Please don't just watch the show. Please do not just share the show. Support our guests. Our guests are so vulnerable and authentic and they've been sharing their journeys with, with you this morning. So please support them. Their website link is in the Facebook post, but I always ask that you go a little bit further. Follow them on social media. We didn't get everybody's handles, but I'm sure they're on their website. You definitely have peace be with you, the letter U, follow on social media, reach out to our guests, connect with them. And when you do, please let them know. Sharifa Hardy says hi. Now, if you're interested in more ways that I can help your business, or maybe you want to be a guest on the Roundtable Talk Show, please visit my website at AskSharifa.com. Until Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, everyone have a safe and a blessed weekend. Bye now. <laughs>